it recording? It is. Okay, recording. good. Hello, and welcome to Moments <laughs> with the Master. Uh, we are here on the top of a mountain in only in New York. Uh, uh, Climb every mountain. Yes. Uh, even in the snow. It was even. It was. Was it snowy in the movie? It was snowy in the movie. I don't remember. Anyway, it snowed in. The uh, we're here to talk about the readings for the second Sunday in Lent. And they are uh, Genesis chapter 15, more or less 5 through 18, Psalm 27, um, uh, uh, St. Paul, letter from the St. Paul to the Philippians, chapter 3, 17 through chapter 4, verse 1, and um, Luke chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. I'm going to be reading the gospel, although <laughs> um, the these are all connected, but Jesus took Peter... John and James and went up to the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Exodus. Interesting to use that word there. Uh, Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but being fully, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. And they were about to part from him. Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. I wonder how he knew. Um, oh, who they were? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, this was very intense. Um, <laughs> no, because um, kind of there, there was... Um, they had a Precious Moments Bible with their images? Probably. No, I, I, I think they probably had some symbol of who they were. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, but he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. <clears throat> then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone that they had, what they had seen. I think in another version, Jesus tells them not to tell anyone until after... Uh, Jerusalem. Yes, after his resurrection. Um, in the, in the. Did you By the way, to... Moses and Elijah appear again later together. That's true. Uh, in the letter of Paul to the Philippians, um, there's an interesting line. Uh, For many, as I have often told you and now tell you, even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is in destruction. Their God is their stomach, and their glory is their shame. So. Uh, the again, we have the difference. Let's borrow this real quick. Okay. <clears throat> Wait, are you going to use Google? Oh no, I can't. Um, again, we have uh, we have the difference between how a lot of people see salvation, which is forgiveness for what you did and not doing bad things anymore, versus um, how really how Scripture presents salvation, which is a transformation. It it is. It is not just being forgiven. It is not just mercy. Uh, in, 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 the, in the Protestant parlance where they talk about um, justification, sanctification, glorification. Um, the, the purposes for most of Catholicism and Orthodoxy, uh, justification happens, but that's not the focus. The focus is of the Christian life and much so much of Scripture is sanctification and glorification to become, as somebody said, I think it was Athanasius, to become by grace what Jesus is by nature. Um, and that was the vision of, like that was a vision for uh, Peter. And doesn't he not reference that? Or is it John later about, like in their epistle, they reference, what do they say? Um, oh gosh, I don't know off the top. But of they my head. they reference that vision <coughs> obliquely. But they reference that vision as we have seen what we it have is. seen his glory. The, well, that's a different uh, one. Yeah, no, I don't know. Um, so I'm going to read this from Andrew of Crete. By the way, the um, currently the Catholic readings and the Celtic Catholic readings are in sync, and uh, so if you have the Magnificat app it's great because it downloads all of the readings for the day morning new, a mass and evening along with hymns and a meditation some of which are really good so this is let me take off the hood here and read this from andrew of crete uh from the eighth century 
Let us eagerly move up to the mountain. How long, after all, shall we delay in the foothills of our own discourse, gazing in wonder at the beauty of the ascent before us? We kind of gave up before we got to the very top on our it's ascent. It's really snowy. <laughs> Uh, when is it possible for us to be illumin illumin illuminated by the cloud ourselves and so have our eyes blinded and yet be initiated by an excess of light into what is above human power? It is now possible for us, too, to listen to what is said, even by that blessed voice that reaches us from the Father, as it bears faithful witness to the divinity of the only begotten and clearly presents to us their substantial identity. I'm going to skip down a bit. For Christ has become human and so shares our present life. And he has introduced into our pattern of life the gift of sharing with us the way of life above this world. If we accept the gift, our human life is revealed as fertile in the things of the spirit, since it has laid aside the sterility caused within it by sin. For this reason, then, humans now on dance with the angels, praising God together with them, saying glory to God in the highest and peace on earth, goodwill among men and women. Uh, here is the message of the mystery. Even if much that we hope, for, this is this is the part that really got me. Even if much that we hope for is still missing, still it is not outside what lies in our power. And you may hope for a still higher and more mystical promise from the Word Himself, who for your sake bore flesh and endured the cross. If you accept it, you can treasure it up within yourself on all eagerness as an inexplicable, unspeakable word, trusting in the capital W word, until he himself, the Lord who suffered in flesh, conquers death in you and raises you from the dead, and by raising you as one who had been killed by sin, he will make you divine in the spirit. Um, so it is, our goal is so much greater than, although, to be honest, I so much so often feel that uh if i could just accomplish the live right and uh <laughs> not go to hell that would be so far <laughs> beyond my uh uh capacities and hopes well we spend so much time scrabbling in the dirt for things that only last as long as this life and we miss the the glory that we that i love that that we have available to experience even now just like Peter, James, and John did. Um, that was, that was well, okay. and I, that was one of the things that really jumped out at me. The priest that uh, preached last night talked about, <coughs> excuse me, being transfigured, like that, that, that we should strive to become transfigured and indeed are transfigured through the Eucharist. Yeah. Well, that, I thought that was just so amazing. Eating, eating fire, it's, um, that that correspondence with Isaiah's vision where the coal touches his mm -hmm. lips, except it's not just touching our lips. We're actually consuming it. Yes. Um, anyway, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I give you my heart, my soul, and my strength. Make me a good man.